Welcome to the Grenadines Marsis Google Earth tutorial. My name is Kim Baldwin and a part of this research was done as part of my PhD but the Google Earth portion of this project has been developed by Ms. Meg Stewart. You can find all this information at the research website grenadinesmarsis.com and if you click on the Google Earth tab it's going to take you to a page in which the Grenadines Marsis KMZ data is located. So in order to download it you need to click on the KMZ file be sure that you already have Google Earth software loaded and then you can hit OK. This is automatically going to open the Grenadines Marsis dataset right in your own Google Earth interface. So give yourself a minute here. It sometimes takes a minute for the information to load. And you're going to see here the logo pop up in the left hand side. So navigation. You can hit the plus sign to zoom in. And you can click the negative sign to zoom out here. In order to get to a specific area you can double click and it's going to zoom right in. Again, if you want to pan around, you can left click and drag and that will allow you to pull across the screen. If you want to change the orientation of your north, you can left click and drag the little N on the top circle. But let's leave it straight up as north. Makes it easier for reference. So here, let's explore the Grenadines Marsis data set a little bit. First of all, on Google Earth, down in the Layers section, I want you to unclick Borders and Labels and anything else that's checked. So you've turned off all the other layers. This just helps take away some of the clutter. So we can just explore the Grenadines Marsis data set. So under your Temporary Places, everything's going to be shut off when you first open the data set. So you can see there's a series of folders which are the different layers of information. If you click the first box here, Layers, it's going to turn everything in the entire data set on. And you can see this is an absolute mess. This is a little overwhelming. So I suggest that you click off the Layers box and you're going to open the different plus signs next to the various folders to see the various data sets so that you can see that the data sets have been grouped already. Bathymetry, Infrastructure, etc. So within each folder you can click the plus sign to see what layers or the contents are within the folder. So if we explore marine habitats here, first of all, if you see something that's underlined, feel free to click it. That's a link. And that link here is a link to the marine habitat legend. So this is the classification scheme that was used in the Marsis. You can see some pictures so you understand what we're talking about. So let's get back to the data. So if we look at marine habitats and we click individually one at a time each of the different layers or data sets, you can see here this is the deep water habitat which was created um, using a survey that in the summer which created a seafloor model. You can turn on the shallow water habitats, you can see the legend is on the left and you can see the different colors represent the habitats that are found in the sea. Furthermore, you can click on an individual part let's say the pink part, and it's going to tell you that's coral reef and give you a little bit of attribute or information about the box. If we turn on sea turtle nesting beaches, you can see here in Union Island, these are the sea turtle nesting beaches. If you click on each beach, it's going to give you attributes or more detailed information, such as the beach name, the types of uses of the beach, the, the different um, sea turtles that are found, etc. So take some time to explore these. There's a lot of data in here. Again, we're going to open up the next folder, which is the different marine resource users of the Grenadines. For example, if we click Dive Shops, you'll see over here, if we look to the right, in Union Island, there's one dive shop. When you click on the dive shop, you can see the name, the phone number, email, number of boats, etc. A lot of the different data that's been collected throughout the research. Again, I would suggest turning on one layer at a time, or two layers at a time, because otherwise some of this gets a little confusing. So you can see here there's water taxi operators, this is where they're located, the number of boats, the number of operators. So if we close down marine resource users, let's open next folder which is space use patterns. So you can see there's a variety of information such as shipbuilding sites, vending sites, historical sites, shipwrecks, dive sites. Let's explore shipwrecks here. Look to the right there's a couple shipwrecks. If you click, you can see the name, again, the year the wreck was sunk, as well as a little description, whether it's a dive site. Again, we're going to open another, the next folder, which is threats. 
variety of information, illegal dumping, sand mining, desalinization outfalls, dredging areas. Other, it's just got a few layers in here. I think one of the most interesting ones is the layer. This is local names. This is all the local names of the grenadines for the beaches, bays, and keys. I think um, last but definitely not least is you'll see a folder that says photographs and videos. Now this are underwater pictures and video clips that were taken in the summer of 2009 for the marine habitat cruise which was undertaken to map the seafloor. So this takes a little while to turn on so give yourself some time for the data to load depending on your internet connection. Once it has loaded you can zoom in you can see the various drop video camera sites or the ground truthing sites which were taken with the still underwater digital video camera. If you click any of the points you'll see here a photo comes up as well as underneath a short description of what the habitat is classified as and as long as the depth and, and when the picture was taken. Drop cameras are going to give you little video clips of the underwater video footage which was taken in the summer. Thanks a lot for watching our video tutorial and be sure to check the other tutorials that are online about using Google Earth. My name is Kim Baldwin. Feel free to contact me with any more information you might have.